this time we'll dismiss the classes to their classes and I will begin to read with Hebrews chapter number four and uh, actually read one verse of scripture uh, Hebrews 4 and verse number 9 is where we're going to start with today and uh, I'm going to uh, take us on a little journey and uh, I feel like the Lord has I know the Lord spoke to me and uh, we're going to do our best to present what the Lord has given to us. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 9. Amen. Hebrews 4 and verse number 9 said, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Amen. Now, before I start preaching, please don't anybody grab pillows. Amen. That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> Amen. Let's ask the Lord that he would speak to our hearts today. In the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, that you would put a special anointing upon me. Pray that you would touch every heart and every life. In the name of the Lord, we ask these things, and we will be careful to give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the Word of God. Now, the Lord began to deal with my heart. I guess it's been a couple of weeks ago, and we kind of tagged on a little bit at a time, and then, and then this week, about Thursday, I felt like that's what the Lord would want for this Sunday and so we began to do some research on Thursday and on Friday and uh, trying to tie things together there remaineth a rest there remaineth a rest and and uh, in on Friday night whenever we went to bed I went to bed a little bit earlier than what I normally do but the last place that I was at was in studying the scripture and the reason I'm basing this because it'll uh, it's just a little story that I thought was kind of humorous in a way but the last dream that I had before I woke up I dreamed that I was preaching at some big preachers convention and uh, they were getting ready to set me up to preach and I was going to preach this message and and uh, <laughs> And right before they, right before they announced that I was preaching for the day, they told, they said, and we're glad he's here, but he has nine minutes. And uh, all except my first message. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the only time I ever hit nine minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I remember thinking while I was uh, while in my dream, I was thinking, man, they took all my time and did a lot of other stuff, and I don't have any time to preach this message. And, and, uh, and I got up in my, in my dream, and I started preaching. I don't know how long I preached, but when I woke up, I was still quoting scriptures. And uh, I felt like at least the confirmation, not the nine minutes, but at least the confirmation that I was still preaching and the Lord had given me fresh uh, scriptures in my dream that we could tie together. I say before I even start that I will not finish what we have in, in this session. We'll, we will carry it on into our second service after we finish. So I'm, I'm going to try to I want to build a base because I feel like this is an extremely important message that I have, uh, and uh, and I really, if we can, if we can get the concept down, I feel like God has a blessing for us if we can, if we can learn. Paul said, uh, most people would agree that it was Paul that wrote the book of Hebrews. He said, "There remaineth therefore a rest." To the people of God. He said there is a place where rest can be had 
for the people of God. Now, uh, we're living in a society that wants us to work, 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 and uh, try to be busy all the time. Uh, if I'm not working, I'm running here and there, and before we know it, amen, our schedule is so bonkers with crazy stuff. And, uh, and, and, uh, and I feel like the Lord would have us to say there is a place for us to rest. Now, David said, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, my feet well nigh slipped. He said, I almost went the way that they were. In other words, the wicked were busy in their life and they had no time for God. They were busy, 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 busy. And David said, it was that way until I went into the house of the Lord. And he said, when I got into the house of the Lord, I saw their end. They're going to end their life, and it's always going to be in turmoil. It's always going to be without rest. But whenever I came into the house of the Lord, there was a rest that God gave me, and there was a peace and a confidence that God gave me that I was in the will of God and that I was doing right. Not everything, amen, that uh, we get involved in we, maybe we ought not get involved in it if it robs us of our time of rest that God has reserved for us. Now, to, uh, and so I, I went through the scriptures just trying to tie a few things together. And, uh, and, and I'd like to start with Genesis chapter number 2, amen, and uh, in verse number 1, the Bible said, Thus the heavens and earth were finished, all the host of them, and on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all of his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, and he sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all of his work which God had created and made. So uh, we understand that at the very beginning there's a precedence that God set he said, I'm, I'm leaving six days reserved for work, and, uh, and I want there to be set aside some time, and, and there would be a little bit of a dispute as to, uh, as to what day or what time, but you've got to set some day or some time aside for the Lord. Some folks would like to say it's Saturday, and I would agree that the Old Testament would probably have been a Saturday time of worship. But our time of worship, because of the society that we live in, it works out better for us to come, amen, on uh, to the house of the Lord on a Sunday because tradition in America has been that we would worship on Sunday. Amen. If we lived in a different country and they had set the tradition on Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever day, we would set that day aside as a day where we would focus our attention upon the things of God. But God reserved a time for rest. And it's interesting that the Bible said that he blessed. Amen. First of all, he sanctified, blessed it. And he sanctified it. He set it apart. And he said, this day will have a special blessing upon it. Oh, I know that through the week, there's a, we sing that song sometimes, every day I've been with Jesus. Amen. But if you hadn't been with him on the, on the day that you have set aside, amen, for a time of rest, you've been with him in your busyness. Amen. And God would say, why don't you put the brakes on and put it in part for just a minute and let's talk together, let's walk together, and let's be together. Now, uh, I'm, I'm going to just kind of veer just a little bit. If, I, if, if for the next uh, month or two I, uh, I took on a second job and I worked, a total of 70, 80 hours, 90 hours a week during that time. 
And when I came home at night, all I said was, uh, good night, thank you for the food, I'm going to bed. And when I get up in the morning, I said, uh, I'll see you tonight whenever, I, whenever I'm ready. And I didn't take any time with my wife. It probably last, it might last two weeks. And then we'd be having a little conversation. As a matter of fact, <laughs> you wouldn't want to be in the room, and I probably wouldn't want to be in the room. Because you know what the conversation would be because we want time, amen, with each other. If my wife said, listen, sweetheart, I just feel like I need to take on another full-time job. Amen. And you know how tight that our finances are. It might work for a week or two, but you wouldn't want to be in the room because... There's something about our nature that says we need each other. The reason that we have a strong relationship, husband and wife, is because at the end of the day, I might not have but 15 minutes, but I'm going to take at least 15 minutes with my wife and say, hey, baby, I still love you. And she's going to say, I love you too. And we take a few moments of our day to just to get... Amen. A little bit closer and to stay close to each other. Amen. And, uh, and God says, what I'm looking for, amen, is not somebody that's working seven days a week that doesn't have any time for me, but I want a relationship. I want somebody that will reserve some time. Amen. And God talks real, amen, real plain when he said, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. God said, I put some time aside, amen, just to be with you. What I'm asking you is that you reserve some time for me and take a time of rest and be in my presence. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Now I'm going to take you on down to the book of Je Exodus chapter number 5. Exodus 5 and verse number 3 said, Amen. Moses and Aaron and went down to, uh, uh, to Pharaoh and they said, in verse number 5, The God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Amen. Let us go, we pray thee, three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with sword. So they said, what we need is a time to worship God. Give us just three days and we'll come back and we'll work and we'll serve God and we'll do what we need to do in the presence of the Lord. Listen to what the king said. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works get you to your burdens? Amen. He said, you're trying to get them a time of rest. I'm trying to keep them under burdens. I'm trying to break them down. I'm trying to make sure, amen, that they don't have a time of rest. Matter of fact, he went on to say, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and you make them rest from their burdens. You're trying to stop them from having burdens. God said, Amen, my way is a perfect way because I'm going to take your burdens from you and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. I'm thankful that God, Amen, what the devil would like to do is keep us burdened down. He'd like to keep us so busy, Amen, with the cares of life. And God said, Put it in part, cast your cares upon me. Lay aside your burdens and let's rest together and let me bless you. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So a step from there, amen, to Numbers chapter number eight, Numbers chapter nine and verse number 18. People of Israel have crossed out of, out of, uh, out of the Egypt. They've crossed over the Red Sea and now they're, and now they're journeying. And this is, this is just 
this, the way that the path would work. The Bible said at the commandment of the Lord, the children of Israel journeyed. And at the commandment of the Lord, they pitched, amen, as long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. He, God said, there's days whenever you're going to journey, but I'm going to reserve some time. Not every day is going to be a travel day. He said, I'm going to reserve a day. I'm putting the cloud and I'm reserving it, amen, for a day for you to rest. I want you to take time and I want you to relax in my presence. I'll overshadow you, amen. That glory cloud by day was a representation of the presence of the Lord, amen. And at night, that same, amen, fire was there as a representation of the presence of the Lord. And God said, amen, there's days when we're going to walk together, but there's days when we're going to stop and we're going to rest together. And in those days of resting, I have ordained. Amen. A time for you. You've been under the turmoil of the world for a long time. All you've known while you were in Egypt is how to be upset. You've known how to be burdened down. You've known, amen, how to get your life all involved with the cares of life. And you've not learned how to be at rest in me. But we're under a different dispensation now. I'm bringing you into a place place where you can learn to rest in my presence where you can learn hallelujah to enjoy being in the presence of the Lord oh hallelujah hallelujah amen Exodus chapter number 20 so I noticed the word command is used in numbers he said they commanded them to journey and they commanded them to rest Amen. So he, he gave them this. Now, in Exodus chapter 20, we're going to start dealing with the commandments of the Lord. And he said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So he said, there is a day that needs to be reserved. Amen. And that day should be a holy day. I don't know about you, but whenever I'm at work, it's not that holy of a day. Maybe, maybe your job's a little different than mine, but I'm not around folks that are holy. I'm going to be hearing some things that I don't want to hear. You know, they're going to be telling some stuff that they don't want to, uh, that they, that uh, I really shouldn't be, uh, if, if I had any choice in the matter, I wouldn't be there. I, you know, my mom used to wash my mouth. That was so, if I said something, even a quarter of that bad. And, uh, but God said, what I'm going to do is I want you to reserve a day that you could set aside to be holy. Where you can say, my conversation is going to be on heavenly things. And, uh, and, and so then he, so he said, he said, uh, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. He said, in other words, set your side. Uh, set it, set it, so that whenever you're, whenever you're setting yourself aside some time, he said, I'm good with you working, 12 hours a day, six days a week. I'm good with you working whatever time that you need to work. If you need to work six days and only eight hours a day, if you can make it up in five hours or five days, whatever you can work at, and uh, you know, and then take care of your housework and take care of your cooking and stuff. He said, but you need to set some time aside for me. Now, and, and, and the reason I'm saying this is because sometimes I can become busy. And I can say, oh, i got Sunday morning, and once I get done with two messages on Sunday morning, phew, that's good. Now I can go do my housework, and I can do this job, and I can get all busy again. And God said, and, I, and, I, and I'm, trying to, I'm trying to work with me as well as with you. God said to set a day aside. And I, I wonder if sometimes we don't get ourselves involved in things and it, and, it becomes, and it becomes a day that's not holy. And we involve ourselves in things and that day that God said reserve it to be a holy day. 
let it be a day whenever your mind is upon me and that way I can be upon you. I remember the time when I was a kid at Sundays, good luck with getting a quart of milk. Getting, get, good luck with getting a, a loaf of bread. Because even the, even the nominal world had shut down stores. Now Sister Anna has to, has to hope that they give her a Sunday off. You know what I'm saying? It, because the world system is always trying to keep you so busy. Because it's more than just a man thinking. There's a devil that says, if I can keep them busy... If I can keep them, amen, so preoccupied, they don't have time for God. I can win a battle with them, and I can be victorious, and they can think that they're being all right. And I, and, and I know that I'm teaching today, but I know that the Lord spoke to me because the Bible said, there does remain a rest. See, we live in a society that says, oh, you know, uh, the Sabbath day and keeping it holy, amen, that was talking about Saturday, and since we can't keep Saturday, we don't keep any time. And God said, and, and Paul said, there is a rest, and there is a place to be holy, and there is a place to be right, and there is a place for relationship, and you need to set aside Amen. Some time so that you can say, it's God and I right now. Amen. I'm sorry, but you're just going to have to put it on hold just for a few minutes because God and I have an appointment and nothing else is going to matter. January 27th is my anniversary. And unless something else happens, Normally the day of, and if, and if she's working, it'll happen that evening. We'll have a steak dinner or some kind of dinner. That's, that's a nice dinner. And my daughter ain't invited. <laughs> we'll go to a, a restaurant, and I'll spend more than probably what I should because I want to treat her like the lady that she's been. You understand where I'm at? Okay? And, uh, and God says, you're my people. And, uh, and I want to set aside some time. And I'm going to treat you, hallelujah, like my bride. I'm going to put a blessing upon you. And I can see my wife saying, baby, I just decided to stay at the school. And work on stuff for the kindergartners tomorrow. After me taking my day off work. I know what my feeling would be. <laughs> and I know what it would be if I said, baby, Home Depot just called and they said they need me to come in on my anniversary. <laughs> I would say you'll have to live without me. You've done it for 12 years, 13 years, and you're just going to keep on doing it because that day is a special day. I've reserved that day for my wife. And we take time, and, and a lot of times I'll try to take three, three days or four days so that I can say we're taking uh, some time together for, for a relationship. And God said, look, I'll just tell you what I want. Uh, you can have six days of, of your time, but I'd like to have a day of your week. I'd like to have some time where, I, where you reserve it for being holy. Where you just reserve it for a time for you and I. And uh, oh my, we're, we're going. But, but the seventh day is a Sabbath unto the Lord. And then and in you shall not work. In four, and then he says in verse number 11, he said, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and he hallowed it. God blessed the time, amen, that it was a time of rest. And because he 
blessed that he made that time holy. Amen. When we set aside time for God, amen, it might not have been holy up to that time. Our day might have been filled with turmoil up to that time. But when we say, God, this time is for you, and I'm going to give myself under the things of God, God said, now you can receive blessing, and I'm going to make this a holy spot. I'm going to call this a holy day. Hallelujah. I'm going to put you in the midst of my holiness. I'm going to put you into a place where you can feel mercy and love and forgiveness, where you can feel my grace overwhelming you, where you can be in the midst of my presence. It happens because there remaineth a rest for the people of God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter number 31 and uh, verse number 13. Verily speak also unto thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath, my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Amen. I stopped there just for a minute. Amen. Because God said, what I want to do with Israel is I want them to be set apart. You're not going to dress like the rest of the world. You're not going to act like the rest of the world. You're not going to laugh at the jokes of the rest of the world. There's going to be a difference, and I'm going to let it continue over into something that the rest of the world has no concept. I want you to reserve a day for me. You're going to sanctify a day. You're going to set it apart because when you set that that day apart from me, I can say, that's my people that's called by my name. And when I call you by my name, my glory, my power, everything that I have, hallelujah, falls upon people that have sanctified themselves to the things of God. Amen. Now, so then you shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you, everyone that defileth it shall... It, it is is pretty pretty strong words, but he said, everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. God said, I feel real strongly about you reserving time for me. He said, if you, back in the Old Testament, thank God we don't live under that part of, under that part of the dispensation. The fellow was out picking up sticks, so he cooked lunch. And they stoned him to death. That's what the Bible said. God said, I need a time. Now, I, and I'm not advocating going back to setting Saturday or setting Sunday and saying, don't do anything, only walk this many steps. But I wonder if God would be pleased, would be more pleased with our life if we set aside time for him. And, and, I, and, and I'm preaching to pastor as well as I am to you. Because God just said, you just, hold on just a minute. If you reserve time for me, if you put yourself into a place where you just say, okay, God, this is for me and you. We're going to talk together. I'm going to read your word. I'm going to pray. I'm going to devote some time to worship. I'm going to turn on some music that's gospel music, and I'm going to listen to, listen to worship. And I'm going to take my day, and I'm going to devote it to the things of God. And God said, if you'll do that, amen, I can say that you're, you're a part of my people. I can say, now that's my kids, and that's the ones that's really trying to be like me. And, uh, and, and, and I want to I wanna take it on down because in verse number 16, he makes this, Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations, for it is, a, it is uh, uh, throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. You know what a covenant is? A covenant is what I stepped into whenever, whenever my dad and brother Foss, amen, stood on the platform and I stood up with them and I stood out in front and I watched that little lady coming down the aisle in that white, in that white gown. 
And I stood in front of them and Brother Foss said, will you? And I said, I will. He said, do you? And I said, I do. And for 20 something years, 20, little over 20 years, not quite 21, I have willed and I have done because of a covenant that I made. And God said, this time of rest that I want is a part of your covenant. And he didn't say, it's kind of like marriage today. You just try on a pair of shoes and then when you, when you don't like the way it fits, you go find somebody else. But he said, what I'm looking for is a perpetual covenant. I'm looking for you to say, until death do us part. He said, whenever you step from this life into the life to come, and you've stepped in there, the reason that I'm going to say, come on, let's, let's come on into heaven, is because you set aside and you reserved a time for me, and you kept your part of the covenant. Yes. I'll keep my part of the covenant. I'll make sure that I'll be with you whenever you're going through the storm. I'll provide your needs for you. I'll always be with you, and I'll always love you, and I'll always care for you. Can you, can you understand what he's trying to tell us today? He said, uh, I, I'll stand, amen, before the world, and I'll tell the world, I love, hallelujah, somebody that'll make a commitment to me. I'll love them with an everlasting love, and I'll care for them. Will they be willing to love me with that same type of love? Will they be willing to forsake all others and hold only to me? Will they be willing to do in sickness and in health, amen, for richer or for poor?" Amen. Will they be willing to give themselves to me the way, amen, that I gave myself to them? I've got nails to prove my love. I've got a crown of thorn scars to prove my love. Now I'm just asking them to set aside just a little bit of time to be with me. I'm just asking them. I already gave them more, amen, than a dozen roses. I already did more for them than buy them, amen, a pound of chocolate. Amen. When I sacrificed myself at Calvary, I gave, amen, the ultimate sacrifice. And I wanted them to have a commitment with me, to love me with all their heart. I, I listened to somebody the other day and they said, you know, my wife has a little bit of a problem whenever I start talking to other females. And I thought, duh. Yeah, she probably should. He said, it don't mean nothing to me. I'm just saying hi. And I'm thinking, well, why you keep on talking? Because you're, you're setting a stage for a failure. And God said, I really just want some communion time. You get busy with everything else, but why don't you take some time and be with me? And, and, I, and I'm on a, uh, oh my, uh, let's go one more place and we'll, and, and we'll try. Exodus chapter 33 and verse number 12. Hey, God and Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, bring up this, uh, bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send uh, with me. So God said, uh, I, you told me that you were going to bring up this people and, and you told me that we were going to be led. And now you said that we're not, you're not going to lead us and I'm just kind of wondering uh, who's going to lead us. If I have found grace in your sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee and that I might find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. And God said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. He said, If you're willing to follow my presence, if you're willing to follow my leading, I will always lead you into a place out of the burden and into a place of peace. If, you will all, if you'll follow my leading, I'll take you out of your prison and into a place of freedom. If you'll be willing to follow me, I'll take you out of the bondage of sin 
and bring you into my marvelous light. Hallelujah. There is a place that I have reserved that if you'll follow me and my presence, amen, it's a place of rest. Amen, it's a place of peace. You had not quite got there yet, but if you can come with me, there are places in my presence that you, amen, will never be able to tap in joy like you'll be able to tap into when you learn to rest in my presence. For in his presence, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. There's something about setting a time to be with the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I looked at the clock and it doesn't look as late as what I thought that it did. Deuteronomy chapter number 12. And we will close after this passage. I'm glad I don't have nine minutes. But unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there. Even unto his habitation shall you seek and thither shall you come. Thither shall you bring your burnt offerings and your sacrifices and your tithes and your heave offerings and your vows and your freewill offerings. Your firstlings of your herds and of your flocks. And there you shall eat before the Lord your God and you shall, and you shall rejoice in all that you put your hand unto. And you and your households wherein the Lord hath blessed you. So he said, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what this day of rest is going to be like. You're going to come together. And you're going to sacrifice before me. But you're going to rejoice in what you put your hands to. You know, whenever we come into the house of God and we really, and we say, I'm laying aside everything else and I'm just going to focus in on worshiping God. Has anybody, has any of us ever come down and prayed and, I mean, really tried to touch God that we've left there saying, boy, I wish I hadn't done that. You know what I'm saying? When we've come into his presence, we might have come in weary. And we might have come in not feeling like we, amen, want to be there right then. And we might have felt, you know, tired because we've been so busy. But there's never been a time that I've ever come, amen, into the presence of the Lord. There's never been a time that I've come into the presence of the Lord that I haven't felt like, oh, I was so glad that I was there. I've had some phenomenal blessings come to me because I just took time. Amen. In the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. There's a musical rest that, that, I, that I'm going to deal with in the that, that I just want to touch on real quickly uh, right now. You play, whenever you go to a symphony, a lot of times they'll play this music and then all of a sudden there's a hush. Boom. And, and, and there's a quiet. What they want you to do, is, at least this is what my wife tells me because I'm not a musician. And she tells me that what they want you to do is they want you to have thought about what was just played and look forward with anticipation what's getting ready to be played. God somehow, I believe, takes our life and he's playing our life. Amen. Day after day after day. And all of a sudden God says, come into the place of rest. And what I want you to do on this day is I want you to think about what I've done for you in the past. And understand that there's still a future. Hallelujah for you. And if you'll rest on today, amen, when tomorrow comes, you'll enjoy the music that I play with your life. Oh, hallelujah. So he said... You, you're going to, you, you're going to come to the place that I have called you to. And he said, it's going to be a holy day. On your holy day, you will come to the place where God put his name. 
And, and, uh, and so the first thing that we understand is we're going to join together in a place where God put His name. Because where His name is, that's where His habitation is. If I told you today that, uh, and my wife hadn't, so don't get your hopes up. But if I told you today that for anybody that came over to my house, there'd be a fresh pot of gumbo and you could have, you each could have a bowl of it. There'd be a line out my door, I know, because, especially for those of you that have tasted of it, because uh, it's some mean stuff. It'll knock your socks off. But it'll only happen if you come to my house. That's the only way that you'd get it. You know what? You'd say, I know we got dinner plans, but we're going to go over there first and we're going to eat there. And then we'll go on because I need a bowl of that gumbo. And God said, what I want you to do is you come to my house. I'm doing the cooking. I'm going to make sure that when you come into my house, there's plenty for you. And it'll be better than anything that the world has to offer you. Oh, hallelujah. If you'll come into my house today, if you'll dwell in my presence today, hallelujah, when you leave, you're going to say, that's the best that I've ever felt. And God said, just wait until the next time that you take time to be holy for me because every day with Jesus is better than the day before. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, in your time of rest, what I want you to do is to rejoice in the blessings of God. Amen. Reading there in Deuteronomy chapter 12. Amen. He said, rejoice in the blessings of the Lord. Amen. In verse number 8, amen, he said, you shall not do after the things which you do here this day, Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. See, they had an eye uh, in that time. Amen. They were, you worship over here. I worship over there. After all, we're worshiping the same God. And God said, look. He said, I'm reserving a place. Not you over there. And you worshiping your way. Everything that is right in your own eyes, but you're going to worship me in spirit and in truth. He said, amen, for he said, you shall not do after the things we do here this day, every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. Amen. He said, so I, I put it in today's language. He said, before you let rest into your life, before you, amen, started involving yourself in rest, you only did what was right in your own eyes. It's not the way the Bible says it. It's not the way the Holy Ghost would lead me. But it's what I feel in my mind. Amen. I'm going to do what's right the way that I feel that it's right. It's right in my own wise. It's before I came into the rest. But if I'm still doing what I feel is right, and not following the leading of God's word. I've not yet come into the rest that God has for me. It's only the person that says, Lord, what do you want for me today? Lord, lead me today in the realm of your spirit. I want the Holy Ghost to fall upon me. Hallelujah. Amen. So in verse number 9, he said, For ye are not as yet come to the rest and to the inheritance which the Lord your God giveth you. He said, Where you're at right now, amen, is a good place. But where you're going is a better place. You haven't yet arrived at it. I've reserved a place for you of rest and inheritance. I've reserved a place for you that what you have now is just a little taste of what it's going to be like. I want you to know that the best rest that we've ever had in the presence of God is just a little taste of what's going on to happen in eternity. Amen. The best glory that we felt down here is just a little little taste of what God has for us in eternity. Hallelujah. 
He said, you hadn't yet come to it. He said, but if you'll follow my leading, if you follow my direction, there is a place of rest, hallelujah, that I will give you. Amen. He said in verse number 9, when you go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit, when he giveth you rest from all your enemies round about, and you dwell in safety. I remember a scripture in the New Testament that says there'll be no more sickness, and there'll be no more pain, and God himself shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. I hadn't crossed over Jordan yet. I hadn't got to the other side yet. Amen. I got up this morning, and my, and my heel was bothering me. The longer I stand on her here, I, I feel a lot better. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I, I've got arthritis that wants to kick in from time to time. And uh, I rebuke it, but it still comes back a little bit. And uh, I know the devil's a liar, but that arthritis is a little bit stronger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amen. And I, and, I, and I pray and ask God to heal it. And, and, uh, and I hear him saying, my grace is sufficient. You're, you're still, amen, made of flesh. And so as long as you're made of flesh, it'll give you one more reason to go to heaven. And I watched Dad today as he said, I'm sorry, but I can't read. Not a matter of him not having education. It's because his glasses wouldn't work. It's that stuff called sickness. And when we step into the rest here, there's no glasses in heaven. There's no Parkinson's in heaven. Uh, there's no cancer in heaven. Whatever thing that you've been going through down here, those aching bones and everything else, we've stepped into a little bit of a rest and we've reserved some time for him. And God said, because you've stepped into this place and reserved a place, there is a place in heaven where there will be nothing but rest. Rest. I listened, I listened the other night, amen, and, uh, and I put my voice in with it. I, am, I heard different ones say, I am so tired. Just don't know how long I can handle the schedule that I'm in. I don't know how long I can handle the busyness that I'm involved in. I'm just so tired. I just don't know if I can make it too much longer. Do you understand what I'm saying? And God's saying, why don't you? Put it on park. The world can operate without you for a day. But if you can come into my presence. I will give you rest. What was it Jesus said? Come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy. My burden is light. What the world has put on you is so heavy. But if you can turn to me for your rest, I've got a place for you. And God says, I'm, there is a place of rest reserved that remains for the people of God. God said, if, if you can learn, and, and we'll get into it a little bit farther, but if you can learn how to take time from me, I've already got the place for you. The table's reserved. And all you have to do is step to the counter and say, I'm going to the place that God has for me. And God says, come on, this is the one that I have for you. It's already reserved. There remaineth a place of rest for the people of God. There remaineth a rest for the people of God. 
God's put us into a place that the world has not had, had yet, yet tasted of. And I feel like if we would experience more of that rest, maybe the world would say, you know what, you've got something that I don't have. You come in here and there's a peace about you that I don't have. Well, I, I found a place to rest. Let's stand together today. And let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, it just wouldn't be right without just giving somebody an opportunity to come and rest for a moment in his presence.